In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create parametric animations in Grasshopper. We're going to create three different types of animations in this tutorial. One that moves geometries, one that grows geometries, and then we're going to combine these together to create a hybrid of the two. To complete this tutorial, you'll need the Human plugin for Grasshopper, as well as the WeaverBird plugin for Grasshopper, so please ensure you have downloaded these plugins before we get started. On my screen, I have two pieces from the chunk model I was using in the previous tutorial, one slab piece and one timber strip. Members of the differentdesign.com can download this template from the website. The first animation that we want to create is a movement animation, which we're going to do using the slab geometry. So I'm just coming to my layers, I'm going to turn off this timber strip for now, and we're going to basically create an animation where this slab piece moves in from above and lands in this position here using grasshopper. So in Grasshopper, I'm going to start by creating a brep, and I'm just going to reference this brep into here, um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and hide that guy for now. Actually, not hide, let's just turn the layer off. And then let's go ahead and just mesh the brep with the mesh brep component there, like that, um, just because it'll um, have you know implications when we run this animation later on. Essentially what we're going to do to build up this logic is we're first going to just move this rep out of the way Like above our screen up here And then we're going to move it back down and we're going to create an animation of that using Grasshopper's animation tools So I'm just going to create a move component And I'm going to move that mesh geometry like that And then I'm going to create a unit Z component Like that one there I'm going to plug that into there and we're going to go ahead and move this one by, I don't know, let's say 20,000. I'll go zero is smaller than 20, one, two, three, um, like that. And then as we drag that slider up, you'll see that moves that piece out of the way. I mean, 10,000 is probably enough. So let's just go to there for now, uh, just to get it off our screen like that. In fact, no, let's go with 20,000 just to make sure. Cool. So that's moved off the screen, and basically now what we want to do is create an animation um, that's parametrically going to move this piece of geometry, you know, back into that or original position like that. Um, so that's a pretty easy thing to do. We're basically just going to reverse um, this vector here that we've created, the unit Z vector. Uh, and then we're going to um, go ahead and move the geometry by this vector, which we'll go and put it back into its original spot, right? But what we want is we want control over this process. We want control of moving this thing back down here. So I'm gonna create a multiplication component and I'm gonna multiply this vector by a factor of 1.00 with three decimal places. So 1.000 actually. And I'm gonna plug that into multiplication and put that into motion. And now what happens is as we go up with our number slider, our geometry nicely moves into place. So it comes from above and just slots in like that, just like as a little parametric movement relationship that we've created. So that's kind of like the basis for our animation. The last thing that we want to worry about a little bit is the actual presentation of our animation. So um, we're going to basically use human to um, grab the material that is currently assigned to this slab piece and apply it inside of Grasshopper. So the human component that I want to use is called material table, which is that one there. And it gives us access to the render materials in the document. So I'm going to drop that onto the canvas. Um, and basically, if we just create a small panel coming out of that, you'll notice we have, you know, material called timber. Then somewhere here, we should have another material. I'm guessing it's custom, which is the material added onto um, this slab piece here. So I'm gonna just go and get a list item. And it was item number 34 in that scenario. I haven't purged all of the old materials from this um, document. So that's why we're kind of getting that. So I've got that material coming through and now I'm just gonna create a preview, a custom preview of that geometry. And the material we're gonna apply is that custom one. And that gives us that nice concrete material that we're kind of going for there. So now I've got um, our parametric relationship set up to move that component. But the big question is how do we go ahead and actually turn this into an animation? 
So the first thing I'm actually going to do is just make sure that this is a rendered viewport so we get just like a nice rendered output um, of this geometry. Um, and the way that we create an animation in Grasshopper is basically, let's just drag that number slider um, where the multiplication is. Um, we can basically create animations that step through number sliders. So if you right click on the number slider name, there is a little animate tab just there. So we're going to click on animate and it'll bring up an animation toolbox that looks something like this. It's called animation controls and it'll give us the ability to go ahead and save out uh, these images um, to another file somewhere. So I could go ahead and, you know, specify where I want to save it. So in the previous tutorial, I was saving it in documents, animation, and I'll make a new folder called ghop move. Oops. Like that. And I'll click OK. And basically, we um, have a lot more control over this animation than we did over the previous ones, we can specify the resolution. So I highly recommend you go 1920 by 1080, which is a full HD. We can specify the frame count. I'm gonna drop that to 100 for this animation. Um, and then it gives us a little preview of um, what our animation looks like. Um, so at the moment we've got like a blank white because our piece of geometry is up here, but that's okay. And then if we hit okay, um, we will see that um, Rhino is going ahead in the background and generating all of these frames kind of in a similar way to how it created them for our turntable animations. So I'm going to pause the video here for a second while this runs and then we'll come back once the um, frames have all loaded. Okay, so that's gone and completed and it's gone and saved all of our files into this ghop move um, folder. So you'll see here as you move across through these frames, you start to get this, you know, um, geometry appearing um, very slowly as it moves down. And you could go ahead then and combine these in Photoshop as an image sequence and you know render it out as a video or combine those image files in some other kind of um, formatted software. So before we move on to creating the growing strip um, animation that I was just talking about, I just want to point out one little error that um, can come up when you're creating these animations. So we've created this slab animation, but um, what's coming through is actually like a slightly red um, kind of shade over our slab. And that's because we still have the preview of these grasshopper components turned on in our um, algorithm. So before you ever create any animation, please make sure you turn everything off, preview it off, except for the actual thing that um, you're trying to animate. So I'm not gonna redo this animation, but I just wanna make a very big point of that. Try and preview everything else off, except for like this custom preview thing for the animation that you're trying to create. Um, so just below this, I'm just going to keep working and I'm going to turn on this um, timber slab. Um, oh, sorry, not timber slab, this piece of timber geometry here. Um, and we're basically going to give it a bit of thickness and then simulate this um, piece of timber kind of twisting around. It's actually quite an interesting piece of geometry. I might just kind of try and sh quickly show how it looks in perspective mode. Um, basically, it um, kind of snakes around and then does a little bit of a twist and a curve at the end there, just like that, so you can see there. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead back into parallel mode and basically just simulate this guy as a animation. So um, just to start with, I'm gonna reference it in as a surface. So um, I'm just gonna go and right click and go set one surface uh, and set that guy in here like that. Then basically what we want to do, um, similar to how we're trying to kind of deconstruct an animation, we want our strip to grow from here all the way out to here with a bit of thickness. So I'm actually going to use a component called the ISO trim component, and this is going to enable us to extract a subset of this surface. So the surface itself is that guy, obviously, and we actually want to reparameterize. Um, let's reparameterize coming into the ISO trim just to be sure, actually. And then we're gonna create a domain for um, our surface. So it's gonna be a domain squared. Um, a domain is obviously values between, you know, 
two variables, but a domain squared is basically, you can imagine that our surface is made up of values along this axis, which is called the v-axis, and then values along this axis, which is called the u-axis, I think, if our surface is built in the way I think it's built. So we actually have to create a domain from this point to this point, and then another one from this corner all the way down to here to extract that subsurface that we're after. So I am going to go ahead and construct a domain squared from two simple domains. Actually, no, I don't want to do it from two simple domains. I want to do it from the U mins and U maximums like this guy here. So basically um, we could imagine like um, the U minimum of U is going to be zero to a U max being one is probably like that height, I imagine, or it's either maybe the U value is actually the length. Um, if we are able to basically control these values, we should be able to grow the length of this strip. And I'll kind of demonstrate that in practice a little bit and then explain it. So I'm just going to create a number slider that's 1.000 in value. So similar to what we were doing before with that previous animating number slider, I'm going to plug it into Umax and then plug this 2D domain or this domain squared into this output. And let's just see what happens here. So if I pull this guy down, you can see I'm getting a little bit of a subset um, of this um, surface coming through, right? So this surface is, you know, going in the, it's actually kind of growing in the opposite direction that I would like, um, but that's okay. It's not a huge deal for us. If we wanted it to grow in the other direction, we could do a deer command. And I think you can um, reverse the use like that. Hit enter or, hit, or return. And then hopefully it will actually grow for us, yes, in the direction that we want to. So we've flipped that U around. So um, zero is actually back here now and one is up here. And basically what we're doing is we're extracting a subsurface from this um, larger surface. So you get this kind of like growth effect of this initial condition. And you can probably already imagine where we're going with this from an animation perspective. So I'm gonna go ahead and do Similar thing, I'm gonna go and mesh the um, rep that's coming through here. Um, and then we're gonna use a Weaver Bird component. So if you've downloaded Weaver Bird, that's great. We're gonna use the Thicken Mesh component. So Weaver Bird's Mesh Thicken. Um, and I'm just gonna thicken this mesh here. Uh, I'm gonna give it a distance of about um, 100. Let's go with 100. Actually, let's go 95. Doesn't really matter too much though. Um, just me thinking ahead for the next task um, after this when we combine all these things. And now I've got a thickened mesh output that parametrically links itself back to all of this stuff. So we've actually got a thickened piece of geometry that's able to grow and shrink based on this number slider over here. And then it gets really simple. We basically just want to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to get a material table. Um, the material name we want is actually that timber 01. So I'm just going to get a list item that guy there and that'll give us that material we want and then I'm just going to do another preview custom preview it's going to be this geometry here which is our thickened geometry with our material our timber material applied to it and then I'm going to preview everything else off so we don't make that same mistake again um, and this time I'm going to you know zoom in a little bit on this timber strip so we get a bit of a nicer animation and of course we can control the length of this timber strip now so we can now go ahead and create an animation from this guy using the animate command. So we can go to number slider, animate, it'll bring up our little animation tab. We'll go and create a new folder under, um, what was it, under documents, I was trying to create it. Nope, not there. Uh, where's my documents folder? Libraries, documents, animation. Um, we'll make a new folder called G hop timber. I'm gonna save it into there. Um, make sure that's PNG. That can actually have like an adverse effect when you go back into Photoshop. Um, and everything else looks okay to me, so I'm gonna hit okay. And Grasshopper once again is gonna go ahead and run this animation and grow it. So I'll just pause the video here and we can come back to this once the animation is complete. 
Great, so that animation is completed running, and if we go back to our animation folder, we can go to the G-Hop timber thing, and you'll see we got like a nice kind of, you know, growth animation. So we could go ahead and once again, you know, combine those frames in Photoshop. Maybe just give a quick demo of that. Um, if we go to G-Hop timber, um, get that first frame and do an image sequence of it, open it all up. Um, we should have a nice little animation of our timber growing inside of Photoshop and we can of course export that and render it as a video. Cool, so in the background of that I've actually got open um, my um, kind of chunk file of this little like architectural study from the first video and I've gone in and loaded it up and um, referenced in you know the grasshopper strips for multiple timber um, surfaces so you can kind of see here my timber surfaces can grow with multiple pieces as well which works really well I've also gone in and referenced the movement breps here so they're all kind of like moving into place um, as you can kind of see there maybe that one actually needs to be a bit higher just looking at it for um, the purposes of this little animation we're trying to do uh, like that so they would go and move into place um, as we increased uh, that guy there. Um, one thing I'm not super happy with um, with this movement thing is just kind of like the fact they all start from the exact same position basically and move in. So I might just quickly like add a little bit of variation which um, I always encourage you to do with these types of animations. You want to make them look a little bit, bit more natural and interesting. So I'm actually going to add a little bit of a random variable, in, variable inside of this movement vector. Um, Basically, it's going to come into play um, just before we hit this unit Z thing. So it's going to sit in here. Um, I'm going to basically create um, an extra piece of movement for every item of these blocks. So this prep is going to take that list length, and I'm just going to go and you know plug that into place there. So we get 17 random numbers. Um, I'm also going to create a domain. So we're going to construct a domain. Um, and the domain is going to be between 0 and maybe 5,000, just so we get a bit of variation there. That goes into our range. Um, and then those random variables are going to be added to this uh, 30,000 here, like that. So then rather than every single um, slab starting from 30,000 above, they're going to be like slightly varied. So I'm going to plug that guy into there. Um, and we could probably just move these guys just across a little bit like that and get that guy moved over here. So that becomes a slightly different um, algorithm, like that could be seen as our kind of movement, or maybe we include that one and say that's our first move. Uh, this is our base geometry. And then, you know, materials, And this is our second move over here. Like that. So now if we go and, you know, move this slider around, we get a little bit more variation in the way that they all appear. So rather than them all coming in really flat, they don't actually become flat until they hit um, that last moment. And because um, both of these algorithms are set up to use this between zero and one slider, I could go and use this zero to one in here, like that. And then maybe we could just remove this guy from the group. So I'll just give a little bit more room. So it's just combining both of our um, algorithms here. Um, and this can be like basically, maybe we'll make it a nice red so it's obvious and we'll give it a blob outline. This can be our animator, like that. So then when we say go to rendered mode now and we go ahead back to zero with this slider here, we are able to go ahead and create an animation that becomes even more complex than our previous one. So I'm going to go ahead and go animate, get our little animation um, slider up and down here I'm going to make a new folder called ghop combined, like that, go OK. Um, that all seems pretty good to me, so I'll hit OK, 
and we can see this go ahead and animate our um, our entire process. So I'll just pause the video here and we can check this out in Photoshop after. Cool, so that animation has run and we could go ahead and try and combine that guy in Photoshop once again. So we go to animation, G-Hop combined, and we'll do an image sequence of these guys. Um, and we should get a really nice um, image. You'll see I've got a bit of a um, transparency in the background, so I might just create a layer and fill it in white. Oops. Um, okay, let's just turn that off for a second. Oh, okay, it doesn't let me do that for some reason. There we go, that's better. Let's move that out there. Um, and then, you know, we can fill in that white background really easily. So now if I hit play, you see we get this kind of really smooth animation of my timber pieces growing and my um, slabs moving into place uh, in that animation like that. All my um, timelines trying to play that little white bit a little bit longer. So that's basically how you could go ahead and combine some of these animations together to create a, a slightly more complex animation that could showcase some of your um, design ideas just using simple tools in Grasshopper.